and we are live. Hello, hello, everybody. Happy Monday. Happy, happy Monday. Yes, it is. So good to see you all on Monday. Boy, I love Mondays. Margie just woke up in time. Whoop, whoop. Yay, Margie. Yeah, so glad you're here. And OMG, we made it to a thousand. Yes, we are at 1,000 subscribers. Isn't that exciting? We've been looking for that and pushing for that and preparing for that to give away this big box full of craft supplies. So I started pulling the last of the comments this morning, but had to stop to get ready for Monday Jumpstart. So I will finish that this afternoon so that we'll be able to give this away right away. Hello, Christy. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so glad. Good afternoon. Sorry. It's noon here, which means the only place it's good morning is in Pacific time zone. So if Sylvia's here, good morning, Sylvia. Other than that, <laughs> it's good afternoon to everybody. Exactly. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> Hi, Sarah. It is so good to see you. Happy Monday. Hey, Jen. I know Jen's working but we won't, we'll just whisper so they won't hear us. <laughs> she's working at home. And so she's listening in while she's working. So good to see her. Uh, does anyone have any tricks to getting thick glue into a smaller bottle without it taking too long? Sarah, what type of glue are you working with? Hmm, that will make a difference. Christy, I love it. She's giving Glennis a run for her money. Just go ahead and address that box to Texas. <laughs> she's just happy. Happy to save us time gathering all the comments. Just address it mm -hmm. to Texas. Well, um, yeah, it's, <laughs> we're going to give that away right soon. And I am so excited. I, I really am excited to give this away to somebody. I don't even remember what's in it. It's been so long. Um, but let me put it aside because we've got some fun stuff today. And if you have made faux stamps before, we might have a couple extra tips and tricks for you. That's true. I'm looking to see if Sarah... Hey, KK. Good to see you. Hope all is well in your world. Hi, Joanne. Happy Monday. Grandelia, hello. Good to see you. Yes, we are at exactly 1,000 subscribers. So um, I, just so you know, I am not going to monetize the channel, at least I have no intention of doing that. So at least not right now. I don't know if they automatically put ads on there, but I'm not going to purposefully do that. Um, we'll use it in other ways to help support HPP. But if you're like me, you don't like seeing all the ads in the middle of the video when you're trying to watch somebody make something or do something. And it's a little irritating. So I don't have any plans to do that at this point. That um, is very true. I hate yes, those Sarah. Ads. Hashtag 1,000 subs. We reached 1,000 subs. I, when I woke up this morning, I got up at 4 o'clock this morning. Not on purpose. I woke up, I looked at my phone, and I thought it said 6 o'clock. So I got up, I went to the bathroom, and I looked up at the clock in the bathroom, and it said 4 o'clock. Ugh. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm wide awake now. Of course, you know, there was a little time lapse between the time... I looked at the clock, so it uh, I, I was already wide awake. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So I got 18 boxes shipped out this morning. <laughs> so, um, there are still a couple more that may go out. Um, if I think that I, I think I sent a message with a, a picture of your shipping label to everybody whose box went out. So if... Um, if that was your second box and you hadn't sent shipping for the second box, if you could do that, I'd greatly appreciate it. If it was your first box, then likely you've already paid the shipping for that. So if you have something at the next sale, you'll want to include shipping on your next order that will start you a new box. Some people, um, the one box went out and I already have another box started for them. Others still have room in their box. It all depends on what the things are that you order. You know, how much space they take, take about. They take about how much space they take. Uh, I was reading Christy's comment. We totally forgot about the time change. Yeah, the time change was yesterday. And yep. we gained an hour. I really don't mind the fall time change because we gain an hour. But um, I do mind 
the screen time change <laughs> because it takes an hour away from us. Um, as a quick update, Doug went and got his CT this morning. And what they're looking for is for the hole in his large intestine to be sealed up, closed, healed up where the appendix was. The appendix is at the end of the large intestine and it's about this big is all. About, yeah, about that big. And when that exploded, then now there's a big hole at the end of um, his intestine. And so they are waiting there. They've been watching doing the CTs for that to um, close up. Then they can remove the drain. Well, it's still not closed up. Oh, no. I know. So um, the radiologist is going to talk to the doctor because he, she said every now and then there's one that just is not ever going to close up on its own. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, and we're hoping that this is what happens. And then they'll schedule surgery right away so that they can go in and close that up themselves and remove the appendix at the same time. Right. Because they've been waiting for that to, to close so that from there, then they said six to eight weeks, and then they'll do surgery to remove the appendix parts and pieces. But we know at this point that that would probably, probably put us into the beginning of next year. And the insurance um, deductible copay max out of pocket all starts again January 1st. So we were really hoping to get it in this year. So if they, and maybe it's a blessing that it's not closing. So they'll have to go in and do it and, and um, do it all at once and get it done November, December. So yes. um, let's see. Uh, was it Sarah that asked? Sarah, did you... Did you say, let's see, squeeze the smaller bottle to remove excess air, then put the full bottle against the opening and suck it into the smaller bottle. So, Sarah, you did say that the that the glue in the larger bottle is thick, right? And that's why I wanted to, to know what kind of glue is it that's in the larger bottle that is thick? Because you may want to thin it out a bit. Like if it's Fabri-Tac or Fabrifix or what is it, three-in-one? All those are made by Beacon, and you can add a little bit of acetate to those and thin it out. Eileen's. Of uh, Eileen's, yeah. Eileen's is very thick. I always thin yeah. it out to put it into something smaller. And then, and then it's a whole lot easier to put into something smaller. And even if you leave it in something larger, when it gets that thick, I thin it out anyway, because it just thickens by virtue of being in the air. Eileen's tacky glue, yeah. yeah. Add a little bit of water to it. Stick a, um, a chopstick down in it or anything that's long enough and stir it up really good and then see if you need to add a little bit more water until it's of a, a runny consistency, not like water, but, you know, so you could spread the glue and then try it. Try it that mm -hmm. way. That might um, work a little bit better for you. Thank yeah. you, Christy. We really do, really do appreciate all the prayers and the love and the support and all of that. Okay. So... Today, we are making faux stamps. We have done it before, but we've had several requests to go over how to make faux stamps, and there are multiple ways to do them. So I thought what we would do is show you from beginner to a couple of advanced fun things to do. So if you've never done it before, real easy to get started. It is a, it is a really easy thing to do and um, a lot of fun, and it makes uh, a lot of things usable in your your uh, projects, whether it's uh, tags, cards, journals, whatever. Um, but then I've got a couple, of, a couple of twists that maybe you haven't seen before because I haven't done them on a live before. So we'll show you those as well. So what we're going to do, you'll need um, some copy paper, just plain old copy paper. If you've got scratch paper, I would use scratch paper. I buried mine as I've been pulling everything out of the shelves. Um, and I put the whatever is typed on or printed on on the scratch paper on the back. And I use the the white side. And I don't really care what's on the back because it's going to end up getting glued down. Um, typically, uh, most stamps are, are end up getting glued down or, you know, used as a tuck or something. So you don't see the back. So that's totally fine. But it's a good way to use scratch paper. Um, I use white copy paper because then it gives you the option of edging it or inking it in any color. Yeah, easy peasy as I can do it, Margie says. <laughs> uh, it gives you the option of inking it in any color you want to go with any any project. 
So, so I have some uh, just plain copy paper here. And then we are going to need something to use as our faux stamps. So I'm going to go through several things here. You might already have something in front of you to use. If not, this will give you an idea of what to grab. I'm sure that you have tons of any of these or all of these sitting around your studio or your house and in the living room, wherever they may be. So first of all, we have that amazing stamp book at the sale Saturday. I'm going to take the camera for just a few minutes, then we'll go back. Um, this is a stamp catalog. And these are awesome for making faux stamps because the stamps are already there for you. And they actually, they're replications of real stamps. So when you, you make them, they actually look like real stamps. Okay. And we do them a little bit differently. If they're already stamps and they already have that stamp edge, there's different ways that you can do them. So you could go through here and find some of people or of art. These are all different releases that they have um, going back many years. So here's some of reptiles. I saw some of, of artist work. There's some of the holidays, um, birds, planets, all kinds of anything you could want. So these stamps books are amazing to have for that purpose. Another thing is magazines. As I'm looking through a magazine, I'm always, my eye always goes to things that would make really great faux stamps. And I just rip those pages out. This little thing right in the middle would make, with the French writing on it, would make a really beautiful faux stamp. So would some of these others around here, but this is already framed and perfect. So look at this one. Here's another one. This was in one of those mini uh, miniature uh, magazines that did not sell on Saturday. I did a quick flip through and pulled out a couple of things. These are perfect. They're like an inch and a half. Perfect little faux stamps. Aren't they adorable? Same with these little people. So really anything, um, they can be black and white. Now these are quite a bit larger and you might say, well, that's bigger than a stamp is, but, um, no, it really isn't. There are stamps of all sizes. When you think back, or if you go to the post office and you ask them what stamps are available, and they might even have them up on the wall, there are some stamps that are like two by two or three by two. There's some large stamps. And we are artists making our journals, and we have artistic license to make the stamps any size we want, right? We're not trying to replicate an exact stamp. We're trying to make an artistic stamp. Here's a couple of really cute black and whites that will be great. Um, here I saw the train immediately popped out at me. That looks a lot like the train in Sir Vagabond. So I would cut around the train and that will be about a one and a half by two or two and a quarter. Be good for Sir Vagabond. Love this little birdhouse hanging in the tree. Now, as they get larger like this, you can turn those into journal cards or tuck spots. You can still make a faux stamp out of it if you want to, and then have it ready to uh, change into a, a journal card or a, a tuck spot or something like that. Well, this M was really cool, but this one is nice and small, so I could use that, and I could use the larger one if I wanted, but here's another um, handmade, mm. really pretty little thing on the, the frame. Flowers. See, even a section, a cross section of, of any of these things would be really pretty, really pretty little flowers. This with the bee and the lavender would be really pretty of any size. So I'm just always looking here, some in dishes. So some I like better than others, but um, they just make really pretty stamps and they have different color combinations. So they'll go nicely in different journals or different folios. Then we get to some of these cabinets that have cool um, art things in, and I might wanna keep it together and use it as a journal card, not as a faux stamp when it's this large, but that's all. it's always an option. If you can get these little framed things with a mirror or with those old pictures in it more head on, those are really awesome. So as you go through magazines, just look at things that you think are, are cool things and rip them out. And I just keep those all in a, this would be really pretty, all in a little bin together that are things that are ready to make faux stamps. Even just her head 
there would be really pretty. Look at that one. That'd be a pretty one right there if I wanted to include her head. If not, then there's two, one on each side of her head. Oh, I thought this was cool. Mm -hmm. Get a lot out of that. Oh, the desert's pretty too. So there's the, the birdhouse up close, a um, little bit smaller. These birds, any birds or animals or wildlife are really great. That's perfect. And when they're together, you only have to cut once down between them and you've got both of them um, separated. So those things are perfect. Another thing I do is look for offcuts or scraps of uh, paper. This is not a scrap, but it's an offcut where I made something out of part of the 12 by 12. These butterflies will be perfect to cut out and have small ones. I like having stamps ready to go in all different sizes. Um, even this, where I cut out some of the others to use for a project, I could make an owl. Those would be cute. And then even some of these fussy cut cards. These are from Minte. That um, little, yeah. Nest. Thank you. Birdhouse <laughs> would be super cute. Even this little bingo card would be cute. And the old mm -hmm. typewriter, flowers. There's just a lot of things. Some, you know, work better than others. Some you will like better than others. Um, always go to the other side. Maybe I like that flower combination, the white and the pink. Depends. All right. Tim Holtz paper. That is all collaged together or um, not collaged, but, uh, you know, in rows, whatever it is. These are all old ads or old, like, metal cans or whatever they are. They These look are like perfect. matchbooks. They're matchbooks. Are they? Oh, mm -hmm. perfect. They're old ads on matchbooks. Oh, they are. Look. Yeah. There's the bottom of the matchbook. Yeah. Perfect. So if you want, you can include the bottom of the matchbook or just take the ad part. But those make awesome vintage faux stamps. So that'll be great. And I always keep the front and backs of paper packs when I tear them apart or use some of them. These are amazing. And I can just cut out the front one. And it's a perfect mini Tim Holtz faux stamp to use in any grungy project. Maybe the project that I'm using the faux stamps in. This is a page out of a Prima pack. I think it's the only page I had left. So look at your single sheets when you use a lot of a pack. But these are all different sizes and really perfect different colors. Even things like this. Uh, here's a whole sheet of different kinds of butterflies and moths. I could cut, just to cut any any of those out. So really, it's just anywhere you see um, something that you like. You can even take a piece of um, something that you've done, like uh, sprayed it on it or on the gel plate, and cut out something. You know, if you really like the color or the cool symmetry of of you know the art on there, and just cut out a little piece. Cats, cats are good. Yes, all the little faces of all the little animals. I have um, a drawer. I have these, these two plastic drawers. They slide into one of those little plastic containers. And this one is labeled stamp picks. And anytime I see a picture of something that I think would make a great stamp, I just tear it off and I throw it into this drawer. So this would be a really cool piece of art mini faux stamp. Mm -hmm. It's about two inches by an inch and a half. But that'd be really cool. Um, even black and white things. This is off some packaging. Thought that was cute. That was a faux stamp off of a or out of a piece of cardstock that came with some paper. I just cut it out and threw it in here so I could do a couple things with that. This was the back of a piece of cardstock, and the back had stamps on it, or maybe that was the front. I don't know. Anyway, but I'll just. This is cardboard, so I need to take this stamp off the cardboard with some undo. Um, any pictures that here's a magazine, some like child's children's books that I thought would make <laughs> you know anything that you like, and it's it's all uh, if you have specific projects in mind. So there's teeny tiny stamps. These are replicas of real stamps. And they're teeny tiny. They're like half inch by three quarter inch. And then there are large stamps. I've seen them up to this, like this big that slap on envelopes. So 
stamp, they don't have to be any, any particular size that you want. Um, I find a lot of little images um, off of canceled checks when I get old canceled checks. Well, there's some that I just wanted to keep that stamping. But I think the other part of those is in here somewhere. And it was um, the corner of the check where it has a little picture. Margie probably has kitty cats on hers. That, those are great. Those are, there's a, a tree house that will make a really cute one. You know, flower arrangements, just everything. So I just pull them out, throw them in here and don't have to think about it. There's something from a magazine. And then when I'm watching TV, watching a movie with Doug or something, I can sit down with a something on my lap and I can, can make faux stamps with these. And I like to do a whole bunch at one time. After I make faux stamps, I stick them in this drawer, which says faux stamps. And then they're just here to, I think some of them got mixed in. So here's where it's just some uh, color art. It's not necessarily a picture of something. Some of them got mixed in with others. I even cut things out that are cool that are, you know, different shapes. It doesn't, it, you know, whatever interests you, whatever, that's the back of a packaging, all the um, either stencils or stamps that were in that pack. This is the back of a Stamperia stencil. It's on every one of theirs. It's really cute. The dragonfly, um, anything that interests you, honestly, don't let somebody tell you that's not good for a stamp or it is good for a stamp. Anything that interests you works for a stamp. I'll leave that in there. That's the divider that I'm not using right now. So these are um, both stamps I made, but they are on sticker paper. So I put those together and wrote sticker on it so that I would remember to use them. Here's Christmas ones, Christmas faux stamps. So I kind of put those together. So if you pull out a bunch of things that are of similar um, style, and you want to make sure you kind of keep them together so you won't have to go digging for them again when you're ready to use them, then just clip them together and throw them into your bin. So let's do, um, before we start making them, let's show you a, a really nice technique for somebody. Is anybody here who has never made them before? or buy the books and DMB sale and cut out the ads. Yes. <laughs> Briefly do congrats. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I like going through that magazine called ad pages. Yeah. Butterflies. <laughs> yeah. Um, is there anybody who has not made faux stamps before? I'm, I mean, no biggie if you haven't, but if you haven't, then you for, probably for sure haven't seen this technique, but if you have, I didn't even look where my camera was today. Sarah has Ooh. never made one. Okay. So there's a couple of um, easy tricks, techniques that you can use to decide what you want to cut out. Because maybe you look at a page like this and say, I really love these flowers. And I'm making a journal that has this paper in it throughout. But, and I want to make some faux stamps out of it. But I really don't know what part and piece of that to uh, cut out. So you can take a piece of paper, a piece of cardstock. Um, I like to just use these slide frames that we've had at sale a couple of times. Uh, easy to go, a large one, a small one. You might even just have, um, oh, I had some right here, some chipboard frames that, you know, we always have around. They come in different ephemera packs. But you can take a chipboard frame or a paper frame and you can put that frame over anything on your paper and get an idea of what it will look like. So I think that's a really beautiful flower. And when I put it on here, I say, oh, wow, it's kind of too big for that because all I see is that flower and it doesn't have any context. So I don't really like it as that, but maybe, and maybe I don't want it that big. Maybe I want it that big. So maybe if I did it like that, yes, I would like that. That's a really nice section out of there. But I do want some small ones to use with this project as well. So let me find some smaller, and you can turn it at any angle you want. Any angle you want. Find something that I think will go into, oh, look, there's a pretty little butterfly. And maybe I can get him by some white flowers. See the only one? There's one. So you could do that and say, okay, there's some white flowers. There's a little butterfly coming down to land on. And this is really light paper, so it might be hard to see. 
And if I need to turn off one of those lights, let me know if it's getting washed out. Um, but you just kind of move this around and you say, well, that one was too big. What about this one? How about that flower? How does that look? Well, that looks really pretty. I really do like that. That's a good size. So if you have a frame, um, you can take your, just take a pencil and just lightly trace on the inside. And then you know exactly where to cut for exactly what you wanted to see. So if I want the butterfly with some of these flowers, I'll just do that. And if you see your frame, if you cut outside of it because you want it just slightly larger, that's okay too. And you can just erase your line. No big deal. Okay. So even on pictures like this, you can say, oh, that bird is really cute. What if I put him on there? Well, that's too small. That one's too big. He'd have to be somewhere in between, but he does look, kind of look weird just sitting there by himself. So maybe I don't want him. But what about, you know, these hearts or that flower grouping or things like that? Let me find the other, another, something different here. Okay, this is super cute. These vintage jars with the Edison light bulbs in them. I, I fed her breakfast and she ate and that's what I gave her that and cheddar. That would work in there if I made it a little bit taller. So I could do that. I could um, use the edge here. I could take my pencil and draw the other two sides and then just know I'm going to go straight up from that and over where the top of that is. Same thing with the feather it would be pretty or this grouping of flowers. That would be really pretty right there and maybe I want to cut it off right right here so I don't want it as tall as this one but all this does is give you an idea of what's it going to look like if I use that it's not that you have to do this to get your size because these stamps can be any size you want but if you have a hard time saying well if I turn that into a faux stamp what's it even going to look like do I like it you know then it all it does is give you an idea and if you have some different size uh, frames or just paper that you've cut out. Um, you can put it around it and just get an idea of what things will look like. So let's go ahead and cut out a few images that we're going to use. I'll bring DM back on because we'll take a minute. We'll just cut out a few things before we start gluing. Okay, and you can cut them out with scissors. You can cut them out with your paper trimmer. I typically use my paper trimmer because I can't cut straight with my scissors. And then they end up not straight, which isn't a big deal until I finish. And then you can see it. <laughs> you can see the not cut straight on the faux stamp. So, so if anybody wants to watch me right now, I think you don't need to, we don't need to just put me up. I am going to just show you very quickly how to make and a stamp or frame. make Perfect. a frame for Thank it. You. So this is a, um, a large piece and I'm just going to cut it in half, rip it in half. And then I'm going to put that in half. And I know I have my regular scissors around here someplace. Here they are. So if I wanted a small one, I'm just going to do a quick slice up there. And a slice up there, you could measure this if you wanted it to be perfect. But this is really just to give you the basic shape of a stamp. See, and that made a really big one, like this one, or a really narrow, tall one. So if what you, you want did was take, cut out a piece of cardstock, the stock. size uh, that's bigger, a half an inch, at least a half an inch bigger than what you mm -hmm. want the stamp. And then she folded it in half. And once it's folded in half, go to the folded side and cut out three sides of the stamp. And then yep. when you uh, uh, open it, unfold it, you've got your uh, frame, frame, your perimeter. Super easy to do. I mean, and it doesn't even have to be perfect because, again, you're only using them as a kind of an eye tool to see if you like what you see. The other thing you can do is lay it down and use a ruler and use a, a, a blade and cut out the center of it. But this is so much easier and quick. And if you start at the edge and make a little frame and then just keep working in, you get all different sizes of frames. 
Yes. Like this. So I just made three frames out of one piece. I could make, I could really go tiny and make a really tiny one. Yeah, just keep them together. And then you can yep. use them every time you go to do this. Stick them in with your, your uh, faux stamps that you can stick it in a baggie or a drawer or a little plastic container or whatever you do with them. Or um, use dies to make the frames. Yep. Yes, yes, absolutely. A lot of people have square dies or frame dies. You have to be careful when cutting magazines. Sometimes they don't want to stay perfectly flat. And I'm going to use all different sizes here. I keep a little container on my desk for trash, and then I'll dump it after after we're all done. I think I'll do some of these little butterflies. And even though my husband is recovering, I just have to show you, he made this stamp today out of something. He didn't do the edge, but he cut okay. it. And then he told me to come upstairs and do the edge for him. But he made this cool. stamp. That's yep. awesome. <laughs> I'm so glad that he's doing so well. Yeah. Feeling so good. It's just. So uh, I will make this stamp for him. <laughs> and just do the edges and it's not perfectly square but you know what it still that looks like a stamp good. right and you know we usually end up this one isn't either because it had a cut on it already but we usually end up either grouping them together using them in a collage um, there's always layering, something behind it yeah clusters behind it maybe even overlapping it so the fact that they don't uh they're not perfectly square is is okay it really is okay yes um if you want to make them look real like margie just said i i'm going to actually glue this one down on this piece of scrap paper yes and then i'll do the cutting around the edge of that one That's so it does step. look like it has the white so yeah yes. so first we're going to cut out some images so we have multiple images to work with. And then we're going to look at gluing them down because there's several different, I mean, there's multiple ways you can do these and you can do them any way you want. Um, what I'm going to show you is just a way to make multiples quickly and do everything in, you know, one step, one step at a time. I mean, so my first step is just cutting out a whole bunch of them, any size, any shape, whatever I want. And once I have a whole bunch to work with, you know, I can make 50 of these in no time flat. Especially, let me go to my little drawer here that has um, stamp things. Okay, this is washi tape came from the subscription box. So I'm gonna look at that. And I thought that that would make a, a really cool little um, botanical with some grungy stuff on it. That would make a cute stamp. So I'm gonna cut that. I also like to use book pages with stamps yeah. like I have here and just put them over the written part because you're it hides it so that was a um four and seasons honestly, one yeah you can use anything you want to make stamps mm -hmm. guys i mean literally you don't have to that there's nothing that says you can only use this or this is the best thing or the right thing you can use anything that you want and the, i love having multiple sizes because so this one is on cards or uh, almost a really light chipboard because it came out of packaging. So it's almost ready to go, but I'll show you how I handle that. Um, let's do one more from here and then we're gonna go to the gluing part and show you how to mass, how, how we mass make anyway. It's, there's lots of ways to do it. There's no right and wrong. It's not that this is the only way or the best way. Okay, so I'll save those because they're still 
usable. Dump these in my <clears throat> scrap bucket. All right, so I have a few images here. I've got a couple of birds. I've got this one with the the bees, the honeybees. I've got some of these little butterflies. I got a birdhouse. Wait a minute. I wanted that one, the first one that I saw. Did I turn them upside down? As I showed you, let me turn them back. Da, da, da. One that I pulled out of the magazine. Um uh, here. Well, a lot of if you look at stamps, a lot of times the background is white, but mm -hmm. it depends on what you're using. For instance, Absolutely. if I were using a, a, a series of paper from say Stamperia, and they had a background stamp or a background that was very neutral, I would maybe cut something from that and put it on the neutral back. And so here, I'll show you exactly how I would do that. This is, these are stickers um, from a, I believe it's Bo Bunny. We have these beautiful little slides oh, yeah. here from the camera. Those make cutest stamps. I mean, think of those. So oh, no. I'm gonna just cut that one out because it's already a sticker, okay? And already a sticker is awesome, although I always put adhesive on it, so it doesn't come Well, out. for today's purpose, I'm not going to yeah, do it so they yeah. can actually see. So this right here is a very neutral background. And even though it has that postcard with the little C there, I say, who cares? You're not going to be able to see. You're not going to be able to tell what it's there. So I just take my decal edge now or your uh, mini stamp edge pinking or, or stamp ears. and I just go about a, you know an eighth of an inch on the outside of it and see that C comes right off and there's your stamp and it's already stick sticky so already sticky already mm -hmm. sticky because of the the paperback so that's how you how you would do that kind of of um you know finding a little square yeah. like all of these would make magnificent stamps just by themselves a lot of times i don't yeah. put the edge around it mm -hmm. i would just cut them out with the decal from decal from edge. here yeah. or the so however you were going to do it like if i'm looking at this uh as a as a real stamp if i look in that stamp catalog it probably has a white edge around it as mm -hmm. most of the real stamps do they'll have that white edge and the white edge is what is cut with the stamp edge and the thing inside of it is usually a straight edge although sometimes i cut the the thing inside with the stamp edge as well but let me do this. So I, I'll just put out my scratch paper like this. And I got this glue stick that I need to use up. And um, faux stamps are a perfect way to use up a glue stick. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn this over and I'm gonna glue it down. I want to make sure that I leave at least enough room around the edge that as much room as I would want on a stamp edge. So some of them are wider, some of them are thinner, and, and you can make that as wide or as thin as you want. I kind of do it in relation to the size of the picture because it is like a frame after all. Well, that was goopy glue, goopy glue stick. I knew I didn't like glue sticks. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to just glue some of these down. Let's get this cute little birdhouse down and I'm just going to put them, you know, in a row. They don't have to be the same size. Put them in a row and I'm not going to worry if a little edge comes up because I can glue that down later. And, but again, I just want to leave a, a, as much room around them for sure. You can leave extra, but I want to leave as much room around them as I would, will want to cut. So I've got these adorable old pictures here. Now, if I do them on white or cream, it leaves me the option of inking the edges in any color 
that I want. But sometimes there's an image, that one might be one of them, um, black and whites like these that are black and white, they might look way better on a black paper. So I might put those on black paper. Um, or I might put them on white paper and then just ink them with black, with black soot around the edge. So literally any way you want to do that. So the fastest way that I've found to, to mass make is just doing it like this. If I have a whole bunch of pictures, I can sit down during one movie and just cut a whole bunch of pictures and put them in the little drawer. And then I can sit down at another movie um, and glue them down and, and make all these stamps. So I'm showing you how to just how to do a whole page at, at one time instead of one stamp at a time, which can take forever. And I always like keeping um, book pages that, um, like when, when you get to the end of the chapter and the last page, maybe there's only a tiny paragraph, and then you have the whole rest of the book page. And if I, I really love that book paper, or if it's vintage or it's really, really old, that paper is a nice and yellowed or browned and, and just, you know, it has a really good feel or a really good look. I keep those as well, and I'll use those pages. I think that's similar to what DM was saying mm -hmm. she does. And I'll, I'll put these on those book pages instead of having the white. It's like an antique or a vintage paper behind it, which can still be inked, but it already looks aged. Okay, so I've almost got all these on. I'm saving those two for a second. Let's do this one. I'm not going to fill up this whole page. I think half a page will give you the idea because there's other things we want to move on to. And if we get through it of all, then we'll just hang out and mass make some faux stamps. Um, I got to make sure I leave enough room there. That's a big one. I might want a little bit bigger edge, a little bit bigger border. Okay. All right. These two are on washi. So I'm going to just peel the washi off. Maybe. I'm going to assume that I will be able to just peel the washi off. Uh, I could tear that edge because there's a lot of white there that I can cut off, but I can't see it in the bright glare. There we go. Okay, a lot of times on these type that you've gotten in subscription boxes, if you take the edge and then push it, smash it down with your uh, finger fingernail, then as you smash it down, they separate. And that's the easiest way. Okay, so there's the image that I wanted. I'll put that right here. Oh, that is gonna be really pretty. Okay, and then here's another one. Smash it, it separates. Whoop. Make sure I didn't crinkle the corner. And I'll bring that one down here because I use scratch paper. I don't really worry about making them exactly, you know, where they want to be. Um, where did that one just go? It just slid in between here somewhere. There it is. Okay, this one is already on a chipboard type paper and it is thick enough. And it already has a border, a black border. So I'm not gonna put this on white because I don't want white in addition. So what I'm going to do, my purpose for putting these on the paper is two, one, to get the border and two, to get some um, strength to it. Because when these come out of magazines, which most of these did, or washi, they're very thin, very flimsy, and they're hard to work with in your journals. So because this one's already on chipboard, it already has a border. If it didn't, I would put it down to get a border and I'd probably put it on black. I'm going to come along with my scissors and I'm going to just cut a stamped edge there. And I would need to make sure that that edge is wide enough to be able to cut that stamp. I don't know, can you see the stamp? Yeah, you can a little bit, a little bit. Um, and if it's not wide enough to do that, then I would cut it off around the center and lay it on black and then cut it around the outside. So it doesn't have the same size border on all sides, I'm noticing. Um, and that did not cut very cleanly right there. 
Let's see if I can get that from the other side. Wow, that's really did not cut well at all. Well, it's okay. It's going to look vintage. So one side looks bigger than the others, and that's because it had a bigger border. But now the hard part is making it match the others and not taking off too much because you can only go in. Yeah, see, it's starting to get really awkward. And this side is tiny. This side's bigger. But if I do that side smaller, then we're going to run out completely. So in that case, I'm going to just trim off the black border just right at the edge. And then I'm going to put that with some of those black and whites. I'm going to put that onto black paper so I can complete or uh, create a border as large as I want. Um, let's see here. Just a side note. Tomorrow is my 25th anniversary. Oh, that's awesome, Christy. Congratulations. You can also use Huggins rectangles as stamps if you draw your box. for. Yeah, that's a cute idea. Then stamp or draw your postage amount. And then in the blank space inside the box, do your Zentangle. Cut out with prefer. Oh, that's cute. That's cute. Yes, make a commemorative stamp for the occasion. That would be cute. You mm -hmm. could make a, make a stamp out of a, a picture of you guys, a small picture. Mm -hmm. That would be really cute. So... These, a lot of you probably have packs of these kind of decorative scissors. I used to have a whole pack. And I found that the only ones I used were the ones with the stamp edge and the one with the deckled edge. So I gave away all the rest and I kept the stamp and I kept the deckled edge. Some of them will say right on it. It'll say stamp. But if it doesn't say stamp, let me show you what it looks like. That's what you're looking for. It kind of has a flat top then comes down in a little bit around, flat top down in a little bit around, you know, kind of like a valley. But that's the stamp edge. There are others that are very similar to it that when I didn't have this, I used others. They work just fine. Nobody really even notices. But if you don't have these, I would say watch your Goodwill because I find them at Goodwill. And anytime I find these, at Goodwill, I buy them. If they're stamped edge or deckled edge, I will buy them. And um, I usually find them for about, seems like two or three dollars a piece if they're individual or maybe five to seven dollars if there's, you know, a couple in a pack. And, and then I will bring them and offer them to, you know, to anybody who wants them. So I will continue to look for them even though I have um, one. So now I've got these down. And these super thin magazines, I can see some of the edges coming up already. Doesn't matter. I'll deal with those later. But now I'm going to cut um, around them to cut out my faux stamps. So this is where your stamp scissors come in or a deckled edge or a tiny zigzag. Like, like pinking shears are a pretty big zigzag, but the, the tiny ones, um, see there, no unfixable mistakes. Yep, see? <laughs> I know Margie says I notice. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go in here and cut around just like regular scissors. I don't like cutting with scissors because I don't cut straight. <laughs> I do just fine even on teeny tiny things with, um, with a paper trimmer, but Hey, I'm, I can't, I'm having a hard time with this one because I can't, I don't want to tear the paper because I have one up there and I going this way, I can't tell exactly where it's going to be. So I've cut two sides of that. I'm going to leave that hanging and I'm going to come cut the bottom of this one by cutting the bottom of that one. I make room for this one just to come out and then I can finish cutting it. And trying to make all the sides with the same size border, that's another thing that, you know, not so good at, but it doesn't matter. It's handmade, right? And you do want people to know it's handmade because then they appreciate your time and effort. Mm -hmm. So look how cute that one is. It's just a little vintage stamp. That was a piece of that washi strip from the subscription box. I will ink that in vintage photo. And that is good to go. Sometimes I don't ink them till I use them to see if I want to use a different color based on the project. So I'm going to cut the rest of these. I'm 
botanicals are always good stamps because there are always real stamps that have botanicals on them. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we're going to go through and we're going to do some um, cancellation, post postage cancellation and postal marks and things like that. And I don't know where all my postal stamps are because they're in a little container keep by my desk to use, which has gotten moved as we've been doing DMB sales. So I've only got a couple here, but that's okay. If I do all the stamps exactly the same, it still won't matter because they're not all going to be used in the same journal or project, right? Oops, see, I got a little close to that bird. But if I cut right up to it, it's not going to matter because if I glue it down, it'll glue the edge down. And this one's kind of uh, of that size where I could have said, maybe I want to just straight cut this one because that would make a really cute little journal card or it would make a nice little tuck spot. But I still like the um, postage edge, even if I put it in the corner of a page and use it as a tuck spot. And it'd be cute having like bird postcards behind it or something because it's a little handmade birdhouse. You see all these little steps going up to the birdhouse. It's super cute. Okay, so then we've got these. And if I cut these out and I say, wow, they just do not look super great on white. It's, it's just not giving them the background that they deserve, the frame that they deserve. Then I can cut off the stamped edge. All I've done is give them a little bit of thickness because they're from a magazine. They're really thin. And then I can lay them on black and do them on black. But I might ink them, ink them up with a, a, a vintage ink and go, they look really great because they've got a little bit of that white. And then the vintage photo or depending on, you know, what kind of project I'm using them on. And like them that way so but there's like margie said there's nothing that can't be fixed if you don't like it just straight cut it right next to the picture again all of you all you've done is give it some thickness and put it on another piece of paper if you mess up and you keep cutting this smaller and smaller until it's right up against it and you have no border just go ahead and take a straight cut cut it all off and, and do it again no big deal okay so we're almost through Got these cute birds. Let's see. Go back like that. The hardest part on the big ones is, is going halfway in and then lining up your scissors to keep it going. So you keep your stamp edge going without a big old glop in the middle that you know looks like you stopped cutting and started again. I can't see the line up. That, that glare is really awful right on me. It's okay. It'll keep me awake. Okay. Okay, there's the birds. And then when you look at them, they really do look like a stamp because the stamps have those perfect edges. And so then if I'm going to use it and I notice that a corner is up, I just put a tiny bit of glue and put that down. It's easier to do it then than putting lots of gloppy glue on it when I'm putting it down and having a mess. This is a huge piece of paper. It's like 11 by 17. <laughs> it's... Oh, see, I just made a mess right there. That's okay. I know that when I use it, it'll probably be clustered together. And um, I can put something over a little spot that I cut wrong or something. But um, something that I like to do with these, especially if they've got a good solid background, these with um, the magazines are kind of thin. I would probably put it on light chipboard, like packaging. Um, but I like to use them on envelopes. So for the closure of envelopes, and all I have to do is glue down the bottom half, and then the, the envelope um, flap can just tuck in behind it on the back. But these that are really flimsy aren't so good with that. Something on a, a thicker chipboard like this works great for that. Okay, so oh, got a couple more. Got to get these little butterflies. All right. 
this one. You could even ink this one that you straight cut inside before you glue it on here. Again, you do whatever you want to do with it. There's so many different things you could do with it. Okay. So if I wanted that to be a little bit darker frame, I could ink the butterfly before I glue it down. And then I could ink around the stamp cut on the outside as well. And just going around the outside with the stamp uh, with the ink on the stamp cut is going to make a huge difference on these. Oops. See if I can fix it that one. It's like trimming a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> little off this side. Oh, need a little off that side. Oh, need a little more off this side. <laughs> Yeah, be careful of that. <laughs> Sometimes I know that that's where it's headed. I just stop and I just wait until I go to use it because then if I'm layering them or clustering them um, or putting it on a cluster, something else can be put strategically on the side that I think is too much or too small. All right, last one. I have here. So the scissors I'm using right now are the ones hair scissors. And mm -hmm. these make pulled really junky looking edges. Mm -hmm. They're thinning sister scissors and thin scissors. you Yep, these are mine are fairly old because I had thick 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 hair and so they were <laughs> the ones I used myself. Um but I like these because they actually pull they're even a cooler edge than the deckled edge. Yeah. So, yeah. and one way it pulls and leaves it long because mm -hmm. that's the grain of the, the um, paper and the other. Right. So I just push them down and then I pull it out and that gives you edges like, that's cool. Like here. Well, I'll, I'll show really you. Close. Yeah. I got a black piece of paper here that I can see those edges. So those are like really uh, grungy edges, and I then you can, those. and then you can use those for. You need to um, get a pair of those scissors, and I, I have never. I, I just go to Amazon or something. Now that was the really thin paper, and it works great on those. On these, this kind, which is um, uh, cardstock, uh -huh. not as good, but yeah. still works. It makes it more. It more doesn't. Closer. Yeah, it's closer. It doesn't it doesn't um, pull, you know what I mean? You don't get as long edges. Right. So yeah, it just- don't get that little fray stuff. Yeah, it's not as long a fray. And like I said, you just push it in and then you pull it out. So that is the, um, of course, my black piece of paper. That is the little owl that I made. Oh, cute. And I put it on really, really pale peach paper. Aww because it's on um, book paper. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just inking these up and then you can see the difference when you just take them off. You think, well, white, white is pretty bright. You know, that's pretty stark white. In fact, the butterflies, I'll link up two and leave one so you can see the comparison. I should have done that on these two because boy, it made a difference on that vintage picture. Looked really cool. Do you know what I'm in a hurry and I'm bending the paper a lot, but it's okay. You can make them as dark or light as you like. The picture's really light. I like to make them a little bit darker. Okay, so those two, and I'll leave that one. Let's do the verse. So see the birds just with white. We'll give them a little bit of. 
And if I think I might want to use it on something or I know in a project I want to use it on something where it needs a little more stability, then instead of putting it on copy paper, I'll go straight to a piece of cardstock so that it's prepared to be a little bit stronger. Okay, and there's the birds with a little bit of ink. All right, so we can compare those two birds. And we can compare the butterflies with ink and without ink. And this one. Uh, probably I'll probably put this on the cardstock. I think of a couple different ways to use this, and it's really pretty. So that side is still white, and the other sides are inked. And you can see how it makes that ad start to look much older. Let me get a little bit of color, just a little bit of color around the edge. Okay. So let me see if this will... I'll use something strong underneath it. The other thing with these scissors, if you don't pull it and you just want it, it just makes it perforated if you un... Mm. Squeeze and it. Then you can, it yep. If you just squeeze it and it makes it perforate and then you can pull it and it, it does it a little bit differently. That's cool. So, so there's that. a bird inked and uninked. And then remember those vintage pictures? They look just really white and kind of, I don't know, kind of lacking. So here's the butterflies inked and uninked. And those would be pretty inked with different colors. And then the birdhouse inked, the botanicals inked. It just they just start to get a little bit um, of character because they're they're framed. Okay, so you can make post stamps. And does anybody have any questions about the process to this point of making post stamps? You can use real stamps. I have real stamps in here that I've taken off of envelopes. And if they're too flimsy or if they don't um, have a border or I want a mo more of a border, I can just glue them on here. Margie likes using her stamp dies and punches with those. Make the frame first and then they make the center to fit. Of course, Christy, I'm so glad you could be here. Yes, the big stamp dies. Yes. The big ones can be used as pockets as well. Exactly. Okay, so then... The next thing I would do is pull out some, and the only three I could find real quickly were these three here that have some postage canceling. You could also draw, you know, do it by hand if uh, with a marker or a fine tip pen or something if you don't have a, a stamp. But um, let's see, I didn't grab a stamp block, so I'm just going to use the back of this. So I'm going to ink that up. And I'm going to start with these butterfly. I'm not going to do the big ones yet because I want to get a couple of other um, stamps. So I'm going to, when I stamp this, I, I'm not going to stamp right in the middle. Can you see how the, I stamped over here so you get like half of a circle? And then you can even go up on the other side and get a little quarter circle up in the corner. They always stamp these things more than once. And if you stamp them on multiple sides, you're going to see different writing from the different sides. I did not ink this one yet, so let me do that. And the ink colors may also be different. It may yeah. not always be black. There may be that blue, there may be brown, there may be red. So I think I've yeah, seen green. If you want to, depending on your, if you're doing a Christmas journal, maybe you want to do those canceled postage in green and red, you know, or gold. Whatever mm -hmm. it is, you could do them in any color, any color you want. I do tend to use, um, hmm, man, my brain is not with it today. <laughs> a um, archival ink. There we go. I tend to use an archival ink when I do this, just so that I know no matter what I'm doing, if I end up doing something over the top of this that has liquid or water, um, it's not going to um smudge spread. yeah or smudge 
So I'll grab archival of whatever color. I typically keep a black, a red, and a blue near my desk, easy to use. So I'm going to do these small ones here. So I've used that round one. Now let's use this one. It says U.S. postage paid two cents, P1. And I forgot to grab an acrylic block. So I'm just going to use the lid of the stamp pad. Okay. Do that right through the middle of that one. And then you can just come down to the bottom and add some of the wavy lines because you know how those wavy lines are everywhere. And maybe I only want those words on one spot, but I can put wavy lines everywhere. And then it just really looks like canceled postage. There you go. So this one says uh, via airmail. You know, you can use that. You, you can really use any of them that you want. So, so now they look like they've already been through the ringer and gotten canceled. And you know, it always goes off onto the envelope and you, we cut that off and use just the stamp. So, okay, so those are ready to go. So if there's no questions to this point, then I want to show you um, not necessarily an advanced technique, although I guess some may say it's advanced, but it's um, a way to take your faux stamps maybe to the next level and use them for different purposes. So I'm going to move these over. Let's see if I want to use... Um, I'm going to take one of these guys. I'll use him as an example. And I'll use a butterfly. Okay. And I like... Actually, no, I'm going to do, I'm going to do new ones. I like these Tim Holtz pages or the, the, actually the packaging because it's already on a, you know, a pretty good, it's kind of halfway between cardstock and, and chipboard, but it's strong enough to really do anything with it. Okay. Yeah. All right. See you bit. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so let me show you a couple that are, I, I only did them partial so that you'd be able to see the whole thing. This is um, a Kleenex box that I just tore apart because um, this, this technique that I use, I like to put them on something that's really sturdy. The Kleenex box is, and I like that the black or the black, the back is just plain brown. So I leave it as plain brown because it could actually be written on. Um, although you could glue, so I glue them to the colored side. You could glue it on the brown side and let the color be the back. That would be a fine too. But <clears throat> I kind of like the black being that kind of rustic. And so you can, um, you could write on it even if you wanted to. Okay, so here is um, a batch that is glued on. Let's see, I'm going to take the camera for just a minute. This is a batch that is glued onto this um, Kleenex box or tissue box, and it's glued on the front, and so the back is just the rough, rustic back, okay? And these were some little pictures of birds that I found in a magazine, and it's just like a series of, um, they all kind of match. They don't need to because I'll use them all separately, but they do all kind of match and they're just really pretty. They're about an inch and a quarter, maybe by an inch and a half. Okay. So that was a really nice size, but any size will work. Now you notice they're really glossy because what I did was glue them down and then coat them with glossy accents or Nouveau crystal glaze, or I know there's a couple other brands that have them. Um, I happen to like these two a lot and I happen to kind of favor, I think, the Nouveau, although most of you probably have glossy accents in your um, supplies. So, so I just glued the picture down 
and put glossy accents over the whole thing and let it sit to dry. Now, it, I would leave it at least until overnight, till tomorrow. Um, I tend to do things like this in, in mass. And so I did all of these at the same time, just spread them out on a, a piece of um, copy paper or scrap paper or a piece of chipboard like this if I needed to move them around and then just set them somewhere and left them for like a week that I think I came back to them. Probably didn't need to be left for a week, but um, one of them got a little bit of, had some air bubbles that did not, I did not see to take out there. So, okay. So then after they are completely dry, then I punch a little hole in the corner and stick an eyelet in. Let's see, is it even focusing? There it is. Okay. So I punch a little hole, um, put a little eyelet in, and then I, I leave them like this until I go to use them because there are several different ways to use them. And, and until I am using them, I don't really know exactly which way I'm going to want. So it'll always, almost always involve a jump ring. So I will take, um, let's see here. This, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this silver. So I'm gonna take a silver jump ring or something even close. There's a good little jump ring that'll work. Because I don't think the silver is, uh, might be big enough. Let's see. Okay, so I put a jump ring on it. Sarah, I do have, I think we're out of the Nouveau. I think I do have one or two of the glossy accents. You can check on the website um, to be sure, but um, I will be reordering both. But I'm pretty oh sure that God. there's still glossy accents. Ah, I must have pointy tweezers and I must have some pliers to do this because I cannot hang on to these things for the life of me. Okay, so I'm going to open that. You know, when you open uh, rings, jump rings, don't pull them apart. That weakens the ring. Pu push them away from each other. So push one forward and one back. That does not weaken the ring. I don't want it in there. I want to put this on. Mm, I'm going to do this one. I'm going to put this jump ring onto my faux stamp and I don't know if it's gonna fit. It's pretty small. The other one's closer to the edge. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll go into that one. I, I'm thinking that it won't. I didn't get down larger silver. Nope, okay, so I'm not gonna bother with that. I'm just gonna grab one of these that is gunmetal, so it's kind of silvery. It'll work because it'll even match my charm. Whoops. I only need one. One dozen. <laughs> As it is always with me. <laughs> can't, can't just get one out. Okay. So magnetic edge of the pliers. So that helps. Um, I turn around till I can see the opening. I'm going to grab hold with the tweezers and I'm just going to bend one forward and one back. And then I'm going to put that into the eyelet, and I'm not going to close it yet because I know I want another jump ring on that, well, this uh, the silver one, and it's already open, so I can close this one. Otherwise, I'd put the eyelet through here so I don't have to open every single eyelet. You only have to open every other one. But this one's already open, so I'm going to do like this, put that one on, and then I'm going to... Let's see, I think I want two eyelets. I'm sorry, two of the silver jump rings to make it a tiny bit longer. And you'll see why or how that is helpful. We'll get one more silver one. The one in my fingers is still open. That's why I'm hanging on to it. So it doesn't just go falling off. But meanwhile, whoopsie, just like that. Um, I get another one out that I just, I don't need to open this one. I just need to hook it onto the one that's already open. And that's why I left that one open 
then I don't have to open every single jump ring, only every other one. Okay, so now I will close that up. If I can get a hold of it. The, the tip of this is magnetic, and so it keeps grabbing both of the jump rings and pulling them up here. Okay, pull it together. Okay, so now I've got two jump rings hanging on there. And on the end of the last one, let's see if I see the opening right there. I'm going to have to open it anyway. Is that the opening? I can't see. Going around it until I find the opening. Where is it? There it is. Nope. Okay, I got to take it away from the glare. Sorry. Okay, there it is on this side. Okay, so I'm going to open that. You get a hold of it down here a bit. Open that, and I'm going to put this little lobster claw on it. And then I'm just going to close that right back. Oh, actually, I didn't want to close it right back. Not quite closed yet, so I'm just going to open a little bit more because I want to add this little charm. I want to add this charm to it. Okay. Now, close it back. Make sure it's tight. Okay, so now what I have is a little, and you can make that as long as you want, a little lobster claw ready to hang with my faux stamp with a charm of a cat. I think cats and birds go great together. <laughs> I'm sure the bird doesn't. And I can put the cat on the top one so I can see all of the stamp, or I could put it on the bottom one, the large largest one and let it hang over part of the the stamp itself that is totally up to you but now this is ready to use that i can hang in a journal i can hang it on a dangle how charming <laughs> one dozen yeah i try to get one jump ring out and i get one dozen every time i can't do things in singles and ones so that is um ready to go but you see why i will usually put the eyelet i do the glossy accents because that takes a while to dry and I put the eyelid in and then I'll just keep them until I'm ready to um, ready to use them. So Margie, that one's for you. <laughs> the cat and the birds. <laughs> so um, I think it's pretty easy to see how I glue the the image, just any anything, whatever it is, I just glue them onto the 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 cardboard that is the um tissue holder and then I will just take a crocodile or any I'd use the small hole for small eyelets you can use any hole punch that you want just punch a hole like that and then I will pick it the color that is it's got a brown border and see this one already came with that brown border around the picture so i thought that was perfect i didn't want to add anything else to that it was it was a perfect border on its own so i could do use a shade of pink um i could use a silver or a gold let's see or a brown even would be pretty If we no, I don't like that color with it. Doesn't really work in my in my eye. Hmm. 
That pink is too bright. There are so many different shades. There's kind of a vintage pink. Just push it in to the hole. Now, if you have trouble setting eyelets, which I did for a very long time, because, you know, I got the cool tool and just tried to do it and never even really learned how to do it right. So here's the thing. When you go to, to set it with your crocodile, I assumed that I need to squeeze the life out of it to make it stay. And that's actually not um, what you want to do because then you, all you do is crunch it. So you want to get it in your eyelet setter and then press it gently. Do you see how gently, softly I just pressed that? Just like almost barely. And then you look at it. You could always do it some more if you needed to. But the back is nice and round. Sometimes they're going to split anyway, and it really doesn't matter. It's how the front looks that you care about. And it's on. It's all the way through, and it's on. So that's how you set those. So, DM, what are you working on? Well, let's see. Um, Mark was up here for a second. Oh. And I think that's how you... Uh how it got to be you and me because I went and I muted myself but then I turned my camera on which I didn't uh, realize until I stopped talking to him so <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear you talking to him so that's because I had muted it but it, when I oh. muted it it also took off the oh camera okay. because so I was on hold for camera we need to put your camera back on no well yeah yeah just click camera on the bottom yep the stop cam there, there we go. go there we go so I have made a bunch of these and I've left this one open just in case I wanted to find something to put in it. Oh, cute. Um, but I had done the frame from a stamp. Mm -hmm. um, I made a weird one, which is um, X-rays detect art forgery. So it's sort like of it. oval. Look this at how she was... used a number. She tore out a number out of a magazine to make the, the stamp value. Yep. I like that. This was a stamp and I actually put it on this paper right here so it would have silver and black edges with the red and white cute um this one i left like this because i plan on doing some doodles around it mm. you know so that it will tie that in because i wanted uh -huh. to keep him playing the trumpet cool this one is actually three different pieces from a page i had made this big oh, wow. huge roll of uh -huh things from an encyclopedia yeah so i had just taken the pictures that i had wanted and i That's just like on them. chipboard cardboard isn't it it like is on cardboard. cardboard yeah um so i make that big roll and if there's anything that i'm looking for i know about where it is in there mm -hmm. so that came from this one that came from this one and this one came from that one yeah. but this is three pages together that shows the these two right here where i overlapped three pages on it oh that's so cool. so Great it idea. sort of makes it look a little you know avant-garde i guess mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um this one is from the um uh like the eye uh, yep the eye the um a red cross book that i was using that these were the oh. extra pages that i had taken out yeah these were my little stamps that i made so i put um I used the box again. Okay. And I put the stars and the moons on and then put the owl. Cute. And this one I had, I put the um, two hedgehogs on and then I, I took one of these and put it up against the edge. Mm -hmm. So the flower wouldn't go against the edge and it would stay within the, uh, the, yeah. uh, the uh, things. So I did that. Cute. I made a kitty for Margie. Oh, and then this this was eye injuries from the the um, book, but and that was on the page. But then I have this really cool stamp that's an eye, so I just put it on like that. Ooh, I like it. Um, I made planchettes. Mm -hmm. um, this is a baby doily, tiny little doily Aww. that I just put on a thing. I did a bunny. Cute. A dog. 
Uh And a lot of these I'll go back and maybe do a little frame on or they're, you know, they're pretty basic or depending on what I'm putting it on. Mm -hmm. I mean, I may need something basic like this. Like this is tiny. It's a tiny little owl, you know, but I may have them. Yeah. Right? She, when she'll do them like that, there's a basic, a base to work with. And mm-hmm. when she goes to use it, if she wants more on it, she can alter it. You know, I could color the glasses with the color, um, you know, to make it match. Mm-hmm. This, this is a um, guitar fret finger key thing. Cool. Um, and so, yeah, so that's, and this is the one that Mark had made. I just made it look like a real one. So. Nice. Stamp. He's gonna go. Wow, I made that cool stamp. <laughs> Actually, I was up, he was up here when I did it. This is a oh, stamp nice. all by itself. So you showed him, yeah. Yeah, that's a stamp all by a uh, actual this uh-huh. stamp yep. by itself on just a piece of the paper with writing on it. So it sort of still looks like a stamp, but mm-hmm. you know it's got the extra design behind it. Cool. So that's what I've been working on. I have these two that still need to find a space they came from my role Uh. and sometimes on one of them I was able to get the backing off because I didn't put much glue on the pictures Uh I really just used the backing to keep it rolled up and if you really want to you could put undo on it right so I had just used a really cheap um glue stick to put these on Uh so they do peel off so see i was able to make this one thinner Mm, because this is right so um but this one i do like that it has the edges from other things on it so i'm going to now work on those cool so who's making them with us christy are you making some does anybody here like corgis jen asks I love Uh, corgis. They got little legs. Yeah, a lot of dog lovers that love all dogs. They are cute. (laughs) Little tiny. Jen, did you see the video I put up yesterday of my um, golden retriever corgi mix teaching the two chihuahua puppies I had how to dig? No, I didn't see that. Yes, it was was like from seven years ago, Mm -hmm. and it came up in my memories. Oh, cute. And um, it was a good one. And I know, Christy, you said you had to start over again because you weren't doing them right. Mm. It, not necessarily. You didn't, there, you know, yeah. you can just there, work it the way you work it. There really is no right or wrong. Like, tell us what, what were you doing that you think was not right? There you go, Sarah. Now that you know. And this, the video will be... Um, on the channel. So if you sit down to mass make a bunch and you want to start because you've never done them before, if you want to try this technique and, you know, work through them in that same way, you can go back and put the video on and start and stop and start and stop and, you know, to do them however you want. Christy, I'm curious as to what you were doing because maybe we can help you save it. Probably not as bad as you think. Exactly. It usually never is. We are always more critical of our own. And it's, yeah, it's, uh, there's hardly anything that's not savable as a faux stamp Mm -hmm. in this kind of thing, you know? Yep. Uh, Let's see. I do want a little bit of background around that. So I'm going to. And you can also round the corners of the little, the little inset. Yes. That you put in the center. That's funny. I actually brought my corner rounders out. I had to go digging through all the retreat stuff. Yep. Brought them out and then forgot to even bring them in or show them. Yeah. Cause like this one has a round corner on this picture. So I would want to round the corners, whether I use my crown mm-hmm. corner rounder or I just go around just the picture. Your, yeah, which is what I've been doing since retreat. Yeah. <laughs> I had to go through all the retreat bins. And of course, my stuff was in the bottom bin. Yeah, because <laughs> we've packed that stuff up for, well. Yeah. It got. Well, yeah. And mine got put in last. Yes. So and you can make triangle stamps and round oh, yeah. stamps. Mm-hmm. Stamps are little piece of art inside a frame 
That's true, yep. Jen. Yep. So like, um, did I have them here? I might've moved them. I have some little pictures of um, uh, beautiful flowers or flower bunches or bouquets or whatever it is. And they are fussy cut out with not straight edges, but you know, kind of like that around the flowers. You can use a stamp, make a stamp of that, that shape. It doesn't have to be straight cut. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, Billy goat. <laughs> Billy goat is not really a goat, just so y'all know. She's the cutest little chihuahua. She's a white chihuahua who has to be underneath my shirt all the time. She's adorable. She's a mama's girl. And, and she knows it. <laughs> yep. And I do have a tall taller cart next to me that I put a dog bed in the top one uh -huh. and usually her and Abigail are in that and when Mark came up I put Billy, Billy Goat was in my shirt and then he came up and I went to help him with something and um, she I put her in the cart but now she's feeling like she needs to get back over with me yeah. <laughs> yes she trained me very well for sure <laughs> yeah I mean, I have to eat dinner with her underneath my shirt. I watch oh. TV with her underneath my shirt, unless I'm wearing a blanket, and then she'll just be under the blanket. That's funny. Christy has a long-haired chihuahua, and he's oh, a big baby. Yes, I like them. And yes, chihuahuas are, are very cold all the time, so they do look for the warmer spot in the house, and that mm. probably is with me right probably at this is, moment. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of funny. It's fairly warm up here in my studio. Yeah. Or you could just put her own sweater on her. <laughs> we do, and I make clothes for them, but yeah. it she still wants to get underneath me. Uh, well, that's more cozy. It and is. You can feel your it heartbeat, is. and she hears you talking, and you're close by. Yeah. Yeah, she's, she's a good girl. She just... She's cute. She just has to be with me. Yeah. Okay, so I'm doing a few here that I'm going to coat with glossy accents. The other thing that you can do if you have, um, if you don't have glossy accents, but you have uh, like a top coat for gel nails, mm -hmm. you can... Um, Dang, it's one little piece just does not want to cut good. It's really giving me grief. Okay. You can coat it with a top coat for the clear coat for uh, gel nails and then put it underneath the UV lamp. And you can that actually, you can actually just use top coat too. It will make it yeah, shiny, a shiny yeah, top coat. If you want it, yeah, just to be shiny. Yeah, that's true. A regular top coat would. Why is it that that one spot on the chipboard does not want to cut, just wants to tear? Sometimes that happens. That's really weird. The rest of it's cutting beautifully. But now I did the trim your mustache thing, so now i got to cut them all in. Hi, friend from Texas. Texas Sweet, sweet Ooh, Tea Treasures. Sweet tea treasures. Just found your channel. It showed I'm your 1,000th subscriber. Congratulations. Oh, that's awesome. Texas Sweet Tea Treasures. T-S-T-T. -T. Um, what is your name? We would like to say thank you for being our 1,000th subscriber. And because you are... <laughs> Um, we've got a lot of people from Texas because Yara, we are going to be giving away a, um, a flat rate shipping box full of more than $450 of uh, crafting supplies. It's Tammy. Welcome, Tammy. 
Welcome, welcome. Where in Texas are you? We've got a lot of Texas people. Um, Christy's here today. She's from Texas. Yeah, that is just not. Hi, Tammy. Good to see you. Let's see where she is. That one is not cooperating. I might get um, like pinking shears that are bigger and stronger. Maybe I'll try. Hmm. Oh, I didn't bring that in here either. Maybe I'll try to try the deckel trimmer and get a deckel mm -hmm. edge on that. That might work well because it's just not cooperating. She is. Oh, yep. J Max from Texas. Elisa's from Texas. Christy's in Texas in the Dallas area. Sweet. Christy's in the Dallas area. J Max in the Dallas area. Um, yeah, there's a lot of, we have a lot of people from Texas. We like Texas. All right. So let's take these glossy accents. And now one thing to remember when you're doing the glossy accents, guys, is that when you put this on, I mean, I always put sufficient amount on. I probably put more than I need on because I tend to be heavy handed in everything I do, but it's going to spread. So you don't want to do it right up to the edge. If you want to ink, ink it before, ink it before you put the glossy accents on, but don't put it right up to the edge. Give it that room to spread um, on its own because, and it's self-leveling. Um, all of these types of products from these companies are self-leveling. So I'm going to do it on not that one because I've got a stamp to cut out on that. I'll do it on this one. Okay. So yeah, you want to, to uh, and you can watch it. So if you need to add a little bit more, you can, but you can't really take any off. Everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> so. Oh no, yeah, it's all those songs come to mind. The Yellow Rose of Texas. Um, I was singing singing El Paso last night. I don't know where that came from, just right out of the blue. But I kind of start, um, I will start around the edge of the what what I made is this the center of the stamp, not the border out here, because I want to give it a little bit of um time and room to spread before I see if I need to add some out there because it's self-leveling and just make sure it's not <laughs> logged up. My uh, first thought was William Shatner announcing Texas in the movie Miss Congeniality. <laughs> that was a good movie. Mm -hmm. That's a funny movie. We watch it every now and then. Okay. Let's glossy this one up. Yeah, I need to stick a bigger pin in there. I'm not worried about it being stainless steel because it's not going to stay. So I'm using a giant safety pin so that it's big enough to get down in there and get the clog. It was coming out. It was just coming out super slow. And I don't want to push that hard and that long. So I'll just get, whoops. Or the whole little top pulls off. Just know that it does and you didn't break it. But that will give me a little bit of room to poke it from the other side as well to see where that... Get the other pin. There we go. That should let me wipe that off before I pull it out. Okay, we'll push that back in. Make sure that that is snapped all the way in so that you don't start squeezing it out and it goes flying and you have glossy accents everywhere. Okay, now there It has we go. been known to happen. No. <laughs> <laughs> now it's coming out fast and furious, exactly what I want. I don't want to have to press so hard it hurts my hand and I don't want to take forever to do it. So. I'm just kind of scribbling it in the center of this stamp and, and without squeezing, I'm kind of 
running around in it, pulling it together so that it meets itself everywhere. It is self-leveling, but I don't have to wait for it to completely do that. And I can see that I still want to take some more out to the outer edge because I didn't overdo it. Wow, maybe I'm learning how not to be so heavy handed. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. I love writing. I, with pencils, I have I the same problem. <laughs> do you? I have my whole entire life. I knew you were my sister. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I love writing with pencils, but I always break the leads. Yep. Especially mechanical pencils. I'm better with regular pencils than mechanical pencils. Okay, and I can see a few spots that are open. Let me see if you can see them too. I, I don't know if you can, but I can see a few spots. Ooh, I that can are see open. one. So I'm giving it a second to self-level and see if it um, puts it all in. And sometimes, I mean, it's not going to completely self-level in five minutes. It's going to be over a period of time, but I don't want to take a chance that there's not going to be anything there. So I'm not squeezing any more out. All I'm doing is taking the tip of this and sticking it in here to bring the, the glue to the glue, you know, just to fill in those. And if you have any bubbles, if you um, this is pretty good. There's not any bubbles that I see. There's one. All you do is stab the bubble. I just stab the bubble with the tip of the the tip of the bottle and it and it gets rid of the bubble right away. Okay. I actually did not overdo that one with glassy accents. It's an accomplishment. Okay, so it looks Abigail slightly stopped. cloudy as it's covered with glossy accents. And I will let it sit overnight. And when I come back tomorrow, it'll be perfectly clear and shiny like this one is. So then I just have to put it somewhere where it's not going to get... You also want to put it somewhere where it's perfectly flat. Otherwise, it's going to self-level the way it's leaning. Remember that. <laughs> And no, I have never done that to, to know that that's a reason. <laughs> uh, yeah, make sure you put it on something flat so that it self-levels flat. And let's see here. I'm going to have to take a deck ledge to that one. Just not doing very well. I like this one, though. This one is super cute with the little boy and girl. And it's kind of a black and white, a little bit of sepia, maybe. I'm going to cut that. It's on a cardstock already. So I'm just going to give it a tiny bit of ink. And then I'm going to glossy accent it. Actually, I'll use the Nouveau this time so you can see both of them in play. I like them both, honestly. That's why I have them both. I mean... I think sometimes the Nouveau comes out a little smoother, but maybe that's just because my tip was clogged. So, oh, I, somebody already said that. Um, you can engineer a mechanical pencil with the thick. Oh, I did not know they had such a thing, Jen. Yes. That is awesome with thick lead. Yes, that's exactly what I need. Yes, Tammy, if you haven't already, Join us in Facebook. The link is in the description box. It's Happy Paper People um, in fa on Facebook. It's a private group. All you have to do is answer the three questions and it'll let you in. And um, same amazing people in there. And it's a safe place to share creations, ask questions, join in the fun. And that's why we keep it a private group so that it remains safe and fun for everyone. YouTube is public, so the Facebook group stays private. But we would like to invite you over for being our thousandth subscriber. That's just very exciting. So over a period of time now, people have been commenting on videos, leaving hashtag 1000 subs. And this afternoon, I will finish pulling the rest of those comments and we will give this box away. Very excited for that. So you might have a couple minutes as soon as this video, as soon as this live is done, to go in and, and uh, comment on other videos. So Tammy, if you want to get in hashtag 1000 subs on this video, as soon as we're no longer live and any others, you'll get yourself in the drawing. Wouldn't that be 
Uh, wouldn't that be amazing? That'd be the, funny. I mean, not the, funny. That'd be yeah, yeah amazing. It, it would be amazing for if the yeah. person is actually the one thousand subscriber won the one thousand subscriber gift. Yeah, that would really be cool. She'd have a really good story for the rest of her life. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, not on Facebook. Okay, no problem. Then you join us on um, YouTube whenever. Every Monday at noon, uh, Mountain Time, which is 1 o'clock Central Time, we have Monday Jump Start. We might make things like this. We might try out and experiment with new products. We do all kinds of things on Monday Jump Start. Right now, every Wednesday night and Saturday at noon, we are having a DMB sale. And you'll see those on the channel. So if you want to read the description box, you'll see what those are all about. And then we do have regular um, Happy Paper People sales. And we have a Happy Paper People website as well, where you can uh, subscribe to the monthly subscription box. And if you want to check some of those out on the YouTube page, there are um, live box openings. Every month I do a live box opening so you can see what's in the subscription box and get an idea to see if it's something that you are interested in. And lots of products. Um, on the website available. We do retreats a couple of times a year in Salt Lake City, Utah, just outside of Salt Lake City. I still want, I still want to get um, a small group of you guys from Texas to band together and drive up because you're so darn close. Drive up for a retreat. That would be so much fun. So maybe, maybe Tammy and J Mac and Christy and Elisa could get together and drive to retreat. Wouldn't that be fun? Ooh, would be fun. That would be, that would be a party with those four. Because mm -hmm. Tammy, Tammy came right in, had no problem just join and chat with us. So I can tell her personality. She fits right in. She fits right in. She is not afraid to just jump in and have fun. So that would be a really fun group. So we're looking at the next retreat being in spring either the end of April or the beginning of May. Um, yeah, that would save you a whole plane ticket um, driving. And I think it would be a ton of fun to drive together. You could drive straight through if you took turns driving so y'all can nap in the, in the car. Oh, Jen came in September to our fall retreat. I, and it was her first. Now, okay, Texas ladies, Jen and Katie drove from New Hampshire Yes, they actually did drive from New Hampshire. They took three weeks off and drove a week out. And they were here for a week because retreat's a full week to make it worth it. And thank you, Jen. I'll check that link. Um, and then they drove a week back. And it was absolutely amazing to get to meet them the first time. In fact, they had only just jumped in just like you did, Tammy. They just jumped right in YouTube and said, hey, I'm here. I want to join the fun. You guys look like fun and um, became a, right a part of it. In fact, Jen, wasn't it like the first video that you guys, or the first live that you guys jumped in where we talked about the retreat that we had just announced and was coming up in September? I think so. I think it was their very first live the first time we met them and they went they got off the live talked about it said hey let's go and they were in they were in fast and I was so excited to meet them because I know anybody who's you know jumping right in feet first is that's our kind of lady if it wasn't the first one it was pretty darn close to the being the one yeah, of the first, first ones. Or second yeah. I think it was the first one because I remember telling Doug that was just the first time we met them on a live and they're in for retreat and I'm so excited to meet them. So <laughs> see anybody that is a happy paper people is my kind of people. That's right, Tammy. That's that's we're all about happy and we love paper and we support people. We support artists of all kinds. I think my first live was in May. Yeah, that's when you signed up to go to retreat. Yep. Yeah, so we're looking at the next retreat. I don't have dates yet, but we're looking at end of April or beginning of May. And it's usually one week. It's usually like a Friday to a Friday. Lots and lots of fun. Um, there are some lives from retreat, um, from probably the last three retreats. There are some lives 
that are in our videos, I should go in and get them into a, uh, into a, a list. Yeah, yeah. Play with so you could find them easier. I hadn't even thought about that. Um, but yeah, to see some of the fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot, it's a lot of fun. Ask my mom and, and what do you think she was like? Oh, she was like, okay. So I said, okay. They were both like, yeah, <laughs> which is, which is really amazing because Katie's a, a, probably a little more reserved than Jen. Darn it. And I'm surprised that she didn't say, well, <laughs> but uh, they both fit right in. And we mm -hmm. had such an amazing time getting to know them. Um, it, it was just very cool. It's, yeah. I now have two sisters in New Hampshire. <laughs> awesome. But yeah, the, um, some of the Texas people have wanted to drive up and it's sure easier when you can do it with a couple people together. So if you had a uh, like RV or something too, that would be lots of fun because ah. then you could sort wow. of relax yeah. and craft on the way. And craft. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Find, always finding a way to craft. Yeah. We had a couple people drive up from Mississippi and Louisiana. <laughs> Candy drives from Louisiana every year. She doesn't like to fly. Her husband comes with her and they make a vacation out of it and drive up. And she has does retreat while he, you know, goes around. Hangs out. Or hangs out in the hotel room and watches the races or whatever's on. That is not working. Those scissors are not this something about this this cardboard or chipboard. Well, Christy, you'll just have to start hoarding your pennies to come. Yeah. Oh, Christy, I'd love to have you here. It would be lots of fun. Love to have you here. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you guys will have to connect. Um, and if uh, Tammy's not on. Facebook. Alisa is not on Facebook. She is also only on YouTube. Um, but you guys can connect on YouTube and maybe share um, information if you want to text or something. Uh, and JMac is always at. If uh, Tammy, if you get a chance, Wednesday, 6 p.m. Mountain Time. Um, Alisa and JMac are almost always at that sale Wednesday night. Get a chance to meet them. And so, if you guys want to you know, kind of find a way to connect. And um, I won't give out anybody's information, um, you know, address and phone number and that kind of thing. Just I protect your privacy all the time. But um, I, I will certainly connect you together. So if you want to share it, you can. Absolutely. Unless somebody tells me, yes, it's okay to give it out, then I will. But I, I don't just so you all know, I don't do that as a matter of course. And on the HPP Create website, where you create an account um, and it's got your name and address and phone number and stuff. We do not sell those lists to anybody. We don't share those lists with anybody. They are exclusively for the purpose of HPP. So um, just somebody asked me that the other day and I'd like, no, I'm, uh, that's like highest priority to me. I just hate when, you know, you start getting advertising and uh, emails coming out your ears from everywhere else because people share or sell their mailing lists. And no, not going to do that. Not ever, ever, ever. Feel free to Hi, give out. Hi, Cindy. Yes. That, that we do awesome. plan on having one, or but she doesn't have any formal announcement yet or when it's going Cindy. to be. Cindy, good to see you. Uh, so, Lizzie, that's not for me. Hello, people. I know you guys are almost finished. We, we are almost finished, but I'm so, trying to fix my recliner. <laughs> so good to see you, Cindy. Cindy, we're looking at the end of April or beginning of, of uh, May. Um, we don't have it set in stone yet. So we don't have a big announcement, but just kind of telling Tammy about it since she's brand new and doesn't know about it. But Cindy, uh, you know, we were, we were, we were trying to get Cindy here last year and had some, some stumbling blocks and, you know, things come up and there's other things that are going on at the same time, but love to see you here, Cindy. So, and uh, let's see, my brain just went dead. Cindy, what state are you in? Uh, oh, why did I just, I cannot think all of a sudden. 
what state you're in. And she's down south. I can tell you that. No formal announcement. I uh, heard you guys talking about the spring retreat coming up. Yes, yes. How exciting were the thousand miles? We are. And so this afternoon, I'm going to pull the rest of the comments, the remainder of the comments. Um, in fact, yeah, we might end a minute early here so I can get on that, pull those comments, because I'm anxious to give away this box and, and send <laughs> it out to somebody. Uh, yes, I'm hoping, who knows, I might make it this year. We're still, oh, that's awesome, Cindy. We would love to see you. Love to see you. Let's see. We had people. Let's see. Where was Penny? Where's Penny from? Why can't I think? Now? West. Uh, she's from. Um, Out there by you. By yeah. North, West. North not Carolina. West Virginia. Um, nope. Uh, uh, Tennessee. Uh, uh, Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. She's in near Tennessee. Dollywood. Yeah. She's in Tennessee. And um, I'm in Raleigh, North, North Carolina. Carolina. Yep. And we've got people in Florida. Mary came from Florida. Sarah, Sarah Tucker, where are you? Is she still here? Are you still here, Sarah? Hoping Sarah can come with Mary this year, this next year. Mm -hmm. That would be super fun. Um, yeah, we have people come from all over the place. Yep. I hurried up and put on a bunch of comments in again. There you go. Forgot some, especially during the sales and things like that. Yeah. But then again, it was just so upsetting. I wasn't thinking about leaving comments. Oh, Ohio. Sarah's in Ohio. Okay. I'd imagine yeah, that's a good question, Fifi. Uh, doing a live for the box draw. Well, that is a good question. That is a good question. Do we want to do the box draw on a live? You guys want to do the box draw on a live? I'm okay with that. We could do that. We could do that. You know, I'm going to have to type 5,000 names. <laughs> no, it's not going to do that. I'm going to type it once and then I'm going to copy and paste. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, yeah, we could do that. Um, if I can get it together this afternoon and have it all ready to go. Um, what's today? Monday? Mm-hmm. We could do a short live tonight. Today was the day we hit a thousand. Today should be the day we give it away. So that would be really awesome. Um, yeah. So let me see if I, let's go ahead and, and close up here. We're only, well, it's 159. So we're only a minute away. And let me get to working on that. If I can get that all closed up or, or all you know wrapped up and ready to go so that we have the wheel. We'll have the spinning wheel. So watch YouTube for um, a new event because I would create a new event in there. Make sure that you are subscribed. I assume y'all are. But make sure that you go to the right of that and you click on the notifications and you click on all not just some of them, but make sure you click on all. And so if I put that in and it's not a sale or it's not a, you know, a, a laughing craft or something like that. Uh, nope, Cindy, you do not have to be present to win. It's just, it's fun if the person who wins is present. I'll just say that. Mm -hmm. It is, it is. It's a just a ton of fun because we can imagine you jumping and screaming around your house. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> That's fun. No, let's see if it'll be exciting. Okay, so let's do that. I'm going to go pull those and get those all, all together. And if I know that I can have them together, then I will go in and put the event in even while I'm finishing it up. And we should be able to. We should be able to do that tonight. Um, DM, do you want to be on with me for the drawing? Sure. That would be so much fun. I know. <laughs> I can't yeah. wait. Uh, I know. I am so excited. There are so many comments in there and it only takes one to win because only one person's going to win. So as long as you have a, a comment in there that says hashtag 1000 subs, you have a chance at winning. So, all right, guys, thanks for being with us for Monday Jumpstart. We hope you enjoyed making some faux stamps and learning a couple of new, you know, maybe techniques that, that you could try. Nice meeting you too, Tammy. Thank yes. you. Oh, you are so welcome for the warm welcome. Thanks for just jumping in feet first and saying, hey, I want to get to know you. I love that when people do that because we are always open to it. But we never know if somebody's in chat and doesn't say anything. We don't know to welcome them in. So, all right. I will go to work on the drawing and watch for the event in YouTube. I will also post it in the Facebook group for those who are on Facebook, um, whichever place you see it first. So you'll know to be here. 
Okay. Love you all. Thanks, DM. Bye. Thanks. See y'all later. later.